Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Yo, yo, you little dark sharks. You little sugar sharks. You've been swimming around in your own sweetener, huh? You've been making your own breath, haven't you? You've been making your own breath, haven't you? Well, you've been a good boy or you've been a good girl. Go catch that frisbee. <laughs> Go catch that frisbee. What are we even talking about? I don't know. I'm about to find out. I got to let you know that this weekend I went to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Mexico, man. Our fancy little, uh, you know, beautiful, um, heartfelt, uh, you know, uh, playas, beach, umbrellas, you know, señoritas, limons, guitarro, you know, uh, cocaína, violencia, sombrarito, you know, uh, uh, our beautiful neighbors, Mexica, Mexico. And I look, man, I love, you know, I got a little bit of that flair in me tongue. I got that flair in me tongue, you know. I got that Nicaraguan tongue, baby. You know what I'm saying? You never even know. I'll be like, igualmente. I'll just say something in Spanish, and next thing you know, I've, you know, all the girls, they just, whoa, whoa. I'm feeling kind of sloshy down here in my galoshes, you know, because they dampening up. I got to let you know that uh, but, and, and when I traveled on the plane, I wore Layered, and Layered is a clothing brand, and it's 100% organic cotton. They're made in America with American fabric, and they got that classic style, modern fit, direct to consumer, no middleman. They pass that savings on to their customer, and they make just the basics. If you want to feel comfortable, and these are clothing for me that's about comfort. If I'm on that plane, I'm cruising, I like to be relaxed. You know, I like to look freshy, freshy, you know. I like to look like that fresh little, you know, cut of lettuce that somebody just just lifted out of a rabbit's mouth and just set out into the universe. And that's what I get with Layered. And you can go to Layered USA, L-A-Y-E-R-E-D-U-S-A dot com and use code Theo at checkout for 10% off. That's promo code Theo at LayeredUSA.com for 10% off. Man, I want to get back to, uh, man, I was in the beach. I was in the beach, boy. And I love being in the beach. Dude, you get in the beach and you just, you know, you have the, you know, what happened? I had the sunshine. And the sunshine felt good, you know, and it was hot too. And that's when you know sometimes the sunshine has had enough. The sunshine has just had enough. It's tired. Everybody's out there playing, and it said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna heat this thing up a little. I'm gonna take this thing to the next level and see who's really with me. Because people that can't handle it, they go inside. You know, they get the air conditioner, or they, you know, some people will go inside and get a um ice cube, and you know set an ice cube on the baby's forehead or something to cool the baby down. Well, we don't do all of that shit, bro. Some people go and they fill their their mouth with ice. Get out of here, you wimp. And I never did anything like that, man. Because when that sun heats up, I say I'm staying in the game, baby. Man, the water was warm. They had people boiling shrimp in the ocean. They had shrimp jumping out of the ocean uh, through, through like a little, they had like a little kind of a coconut canal. They would just, you know, kind of saunter through that and land on your plate and they were cooked. The water, the water was hot. That's how much sunlight was coming down. Cause the sun was saying, who want you riding with me or you out? Cause if you out, get out, but I'm heating things up. I think it was honestly maybe 170 degrees. Uh, the co- the shrimp came out, they was coconut. They had grouper, dude, a lot of grouper. Dude, people were had a snorkel. That was the main thing. Snorkel, fork, knife. And you just swim through the water and eat. Everything was, it was, it was so hot. All the fish was cooked. You couldn't find any sashimi. Things was grilled up. It was water grilled, broiled. Everything was broiled. That's how hot it was down there in Mexico. And when the sun lit it up, boy, I stayed in it. I got sunburned. I got sun learned. I got sun yearned, bro. I was yearning for anything but the sun. I took it on, baby. Because that's where I'm at. When I remember when I was young, I used to play this game. Did you ever play this game when you were young? And I don't know if this was just like poor kids played this shit, but it seemed, you know, we didn't have a lot of extra games. 
You know, I remember we'd go over to like rich kids' house and they would have, um, you know, dessert. Like, at, you know, their family would be eating dessert together or um, like we didn't have dessert at my house. We had, here's what we had. My mom said you could have two cookies. If you get three cookies, I'm going to whoop your ass. So that was, so really dessert at my house was like, do you want to play? Do you want to play a game? Do you want to play a game? Because you could have two cookies, and you could be that good little Samaritan, that good little member de familia. But you could reach for that third little sugary nook nook, and that's when, that's suddenly, it was like Saw. It was like, like that movie Saw, you know? It was like, oh, now we're heating things up. Now we're playing a whole different game because now you're trying to eat a cookie and mom's trying to whoop nanny, you know? Yeah! Mom turning you into a fucking, that ninth reindeer boy on Donner on Blitzen on ass whipsin. And that's, that's what it was. If you wanted to go for that third cookie, then you was going to, suddenly it was a challenge. You weren't having dessert. Suddenly you was on a dangerous game show because mom had said only two cookies. And you had decided, well, I deserve more. That's one thing I remember about dessert time. But what was I talking about? Dang. Oh, the beach, sunshine, getting dessert, cooking. Let me think. Being at the beach. Yeah, I was at the beach. And yeah, and then we had dessert. Oh, man, I can't even remember, and I wanted to talk to you guys. I know I was talking about the clothing, what I wore. But, yeah, I went to Cabo San Lucas this weekend, and uh, and it was fun, man. You know, there's so many, and honestly, I love being in, uh, I love being in Spanish-speaking countries. I just love it. I really, really do. And it makes me feel, because I'm not joking, when I start, when I'm, I start to really quickly, I, 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 I'm able to communicate pretty quickly. And I just love it, and it makes me. And there's just so many good. I feel like there's a, so many. Um, there's a lot of a lot. Of, I've met a lot of great people that are Latino. I really have. I really, really have. And they have a special thing where you know I met some some. I met a man down there who, and I said some, but I changed it to a, uh, you know, because I'm trying to trying to keep tabs on what I'm if what I'm saying is you know I'm trying to keep tabs on. Um, not generalizing about those types of things. Like, I met a man, and he was born in California, but he said, you know what? He worked here, lived here for a long time. He said, I've moved, I, you know, I have family back in Mexico. I moved back to Mexico. He said, it's just more fun. He said, it's less stressful. It's more relaxing. Uh, and I thought that that was really interesting. And he, he was awesome. He was awesome, dude. And uh, we had fantasy football draft, and we had, we had a great time down in Los Cabos. But it was hot, boy. That sunshine was next level. Oh, that's what I was talking about. That sunshine was next level. And if you wanted to really get involved in the, I mean, you had, I got sunburned. I got, I took it all like a G, like a champ. Oh, here's what I was talking about. Awesome. I didn't think my brain was going to play, you know. And my brain was, it was just like it was on a merry-go-round just now. And it was on, and it was about to get off. It had almost given up, but then it got back around to where it had started. When I was a kid, so we get that dessert, right? So you could get the dessert. But then also what I was going into was we used to play this game. And the game was called Hot Water. And we used to play this game at the house where we would get in the shower, and you would turn the hot water. You know, it was me and my brother. And we were in there, and we was naked. You know, we was naked, man, and we weren't looking at each other real. You know, I, my brother, I look rib cage up. That's where I look. If I'm looking at my brother's body, rib cage up. That's right. You know, I ain't that wild. I ain't trying to be that good of brothers. You know what I'm saying, baby? I ain't trying to be so much of brothers that we turn it into a little bit of sisters. So I look only rib cage up when me and my brother are doing, you know, experiencing full body nudity. And so we would be in the shower and we would play this game called hot water. And you would turn the hot water and the other person had to stay in it. And then if they stayed in it, then you had to get in it, take over their spot, and they would turn it up more. And your whole body was turning red, man. 
your eyes couldn't even open because your eyelash, your eyebrows or whatever they was, or eye, uh, the skin over your eye, your little, I don't know what that is, little vision nut sacks or something that kind of hang down over your eyes. But they were starting to get so soft, they couldn't even, they wouldn't open anymore. They just limp, just hanging limp over your eyes, just like limp little baby nut sacks. And you, you would just, because your, your skin was starting to boil, and you would just switch back and forth and keep cranking it up until somebody gave up. And then that person was the loser. They lost. But that hot water, I don't know if you ever played hot water. Get in there, boy, get in there and crank that thing up. But that's the kind of games you play when you fucking didn't have any money at the house, man. We all wanna, you want to play a little bit of hot water? Maybe have two cookies for dessert, be a good boy, act like you're going to behave, sneak upstairs and to the fucking bathroom. And man, you shouldn't have given these two little boys a shower. That you shouldn't have given us shower access because we start playing hot water. Dude, my mom would come up sometimes because we'd have the water on for an hour and a half. Dude, we'd go deep. We'd go all the way to the end of the line until that thing was full hot steam. You go in the bathroom, couldn't even see. Where are y'all? Where are you? My mom, furious. And my mom was at, she was like trying to find us because she cared to help us. But at the same time, going to whoop your ass once she knew you were okay. Isn't that the irony of like some like moms trying to like, you know, check on you? It's like there as soon as you're okay... I'm going to whoop your ass. That was so funny, man, just about being a kid, you know, and about having that kind of mom where, you know, they were just, you know, just stressed out and overworked and they were the sole provider. And when your mom had to be the sole provider and kind of take care of, you know, be the, um, be the disciplinarian as well, that was wild. As soon, my mom like, I'm going to make sure you're okay. And as soon as you're okay, I'm going to make sure you are not okay. And that's how it was when we played hot water. You know, it must be tough on a lot of moms out there that have to be the disciplinarian. You know, I'm thinking about that right now all of a sudden. You know, imagine that because in your nature probably as a woman, you know, I've never been a woman. But in your nature as a woman, I bet you just want to be loving. You know, and you want to be... You know, you want to be caring and you want to be, uh, you know, you just want to be, you know, sweet and and just hug your kids and, you know, and just make sure they're happy. That's what you want to be probably as a mother. You have those, you know, you want to be nurturing and and then to have to be a disciplinarian if you're a single mom or if you... You know, something wrong with the husband. Maybe he got hit by electricity or something and he can't be active. You know, or something happened to him. He got bent. You know, he fell off of a roof or something and he's in a, you know, he's in a wheelchair or a gurney. Some people you see, when I was growing up, at least people was in a wheelchair. Now you see a dude on a gurney just laid out completely flat. Like, dude, at least just be regular handicapped. Don't go fucking go gurney, you know? Like even people that are like, you know, used to be when I was growing up, people that was just regular handicapped, now they laying all the way down when they used to just sit up. It's kind of ridiculous, man. Like now everybody's getting lazy, even handicapped people getting lazy. Or even, you know, if somebody's paraplegic, now they pretending they a quad just to get that extra hit of money off the government or something, you know. It's just, or just to take it easy. And I'm not point fingers at those at people that have impairments or people that have handicaps i'm saying it just at all certain behaviors they affect every realm of of physicality and i in these days you know i saw somebody the other day pushing their their family member into a um into a um you know we was at a hamburger hamlet you know and i was about to catch me a little bit of burger you know get that sirloin hitter and you was, and then they had uh, somebody push a family member in on a fucking gurney. Like, damn. What about the, this, you know? Y'all can't even prop fucking, you know, Uncle freaking Katzenmeyer or whatever the boy's, the dude's name is. You know, y'all can't fucking pre- prop your boy up in a wheelchair like a natural man. Y'all got this dude gurneyed out up in here. 
Come on. I mean, just be strong. We can all be strong, even when there are moments where we want to be weak. And we didn't even go in with any intro music this week. This has been kind of uh, different. But I think part of me wanted to get back to my roots. You know, I've been feeling sometimes like, uh, you know, the podcast, po- you know, the, the listenership of the podcast has been increasing. And so part of me, I start to get, I don't get nervous. But, you know, you start to, I start to wonder, well, am I, I, I just want to make sure that I'm do that I'm still trying to communicate the same way that I was trying to communicate in the beginning. And, uh, and so, you know, I have to be cognizant of that and I have to be, you know, because I want this pod, like this podcast started out, I remember on the hotline, it was like, if you have issues, if you have a problem, if you have something you want to share, you know, you can share it. And so I want this to try and, I want this to try and, I want to try and make sure that that's what this is, you know, cause it's interesting as things grow, they change. They really do. Even if you don't want them to, it's, um, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, you always say like, oh, I want to be able to, I'd love to be able to perform for a thousand people, you know? And then next thing you know, you're performing for a thousand people, but now there's, there's more people involved. Now there's somebody that, that runs the stage lights, the stage lights. And now there's somebody that's, you know, backstage making sure that you're okay. And now there's security, you know, at the venue, or now you're at a bigger place where there's a bigger stage. Excuse me, I got the hiccup. But it's like, things change. Things change. And it's like, so, and I'm not saying that those are things are, 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 are for me, where it's like, you know, the security, and I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that you take anything and you put it in a bigger place, You are you in, you like, say a plant, maybe a plant one time is like, man, I'm a fucking plant, you know? I'm just a plant, and I'm living here at the Home Depot, and I'm in a little pot. You know, when they got people coming by me, some people, they don't even want to plant. They just, you know, they ducking off to to text their side piece while their wife is over there looking at kitchen sinks, and they ducking off into the herbivore section to text their side piece, and then they see me. I'm just a little plant. But then maybe that plant has some, some, some goals or some small dreams in that plant. Say, I'd love to one day be out there with some other plants. You know, I'd love to be just, have my roots just feeling through some fucking new soil and get my root, my stem all fucking lit up because my my roots is feeling through new soil. And then I'll live around other plants and maybe I'll live in a little, you know, maybe I'll live in a median on a, bet, on a, between two busy roads. That might be his next goal, that plant's goal. And then maybe that plant suddenly, you know, somebody buys him and, on the way home, the you know the wife from you know they she picked out a nice sink because she thinks that you know her and her man are staying together. But then she sees a text come through with some titties pops up onto his phone, and now suddenly she's kicking the head, she's kicking his ass out because he's been you know he's not, he's not being honest, and so he now he's on the side of the road with his plant, and he gets tired of carrying his plant, so he sets the plant down on a median, and now the plant has its dream come true, but now the plant. It's like, oh, I don't want to, you know, now I'm thinking about a forest. And now the plant's in the forest, right? So suddenly something happens. There's a plate tectonic shift in the plant. The median gets moved out into the, you know, there's an earth, Poseidon, you know, belches or something. And half the world shifts plates or whatever. And then the median is shifted and everything's changed. And now, now the plant is, is uh, eroded down the, down the countryside into a forest. And now it lives in a forest. But now the plant has other different concerns and worries and things. Now there's animals coming by, you know? And now there's, uh, you know, the plant's outdoors. It's not indoors at the Home Depot anymore. Now there's weather to be dealt with. You know, the plant didn't think about weather before. It was in a Home Depot, you know? It was just watching struggling men and women duck off to hit their side piece and catch that titty pick or that D pick or that in bag pick. Because a lot of men these days don't want to send their dick. They just send in a picture, a picture uh, of their nuts or a brief sketch of their nuts. So anyway, but I'm just saying like sometimes you get into a place and then things change. And it's like, I don't know what I'm saying. What am I? Here's what I'm saying is I just I want to try and be cognizant of the fact that I don't want this podcast to change. Um because there's been a lot of listeners that were that are there from the beginning, and and I still want this to be a, a a great place where we can, you know, talk about stuff and learn about stuff together. And uh, I'm grateful for you guys' patience, and I'm uh, and I'm grateful you guys are here today uh, with me. 
And I'm also, let's turn back the clocks. And this is, uh, I just came from Cabo San Lucas. So everybody know a, a place that to them feels like Paradiso Paradise. It's that tiny sand who, you know, tiny boy, get it, tiny. Come on. Tiny. A little bit of Paradise City. Take me home. That's Tiny Sand Who right there. And some of you guys know Tiny Sand, who was a man who, out of the blue, when his pod first started up, he just sent in some music. And he's from the nether regions. We don't, and I'm not joking, the man name spelled T I N Y S A N D H O O. And dude, it just came in the inbox. He said, Hey, I love what you're doing. I, I wrote this, uh, I put this ditty together for you. And there he did, and he played that up. And that's Tiny Sand Who right there with that instrumental hitter that he made just for us in the Paradise City. <sighs> Thank you, Tiny. Thank you guys for being here. This is a great time. You know, a lot going on. I was just at the beach, man. I, you know, and I didn't realize how much I love just getting, getting to the beach and feeling that. You know, just feeling the... And you know what's funny? I was looking at the beach. And I'm like, dude, this is kind of naughty what they do. The beach just keeps kind of just sucking on the shore. If you notice it, you're like, dang, boy, the beach is so naughty. The the water, the water, the na the uh not naves, waves. The waves are so naughty, bro. You if you notice with the waves, they just when you were looking at it, they it looked like they're just licking the freaking shore. Like they're trying to catch some straight up. You know, like they're trying to get that, like they're trying to get the land to just really bust out. And that kind of blew my mind a little bit just watching that. And then just seeing like, you know, how they just, I don't know, just the shore and the beach, they're right there constantly rubbing together. And you have to think, and that's why I think it's just such a place of magic. Because when you think that the land, land, you know, which is just, which is a, a an amazing form and water, which is a, which is an amazing, which is the fluid, bruh. Water is the straight up. That's that exto. That, that's that ectoplasm. You know, that's that straight up. You know, that's that's that mother nature's. You know, plasma. Water. That's that ex, ectoplasm. That's you know God's big, 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 big vibe sauce. And when you think that, that water and land are still right there in the ocean, just rubbing against each other, just what a frick, that friction, the, the magic of those two things, the, the main things, land and water, and they're right there rubbing against each other, creating, it must be magic. But yeah, there's just something magic that that, that, that friction occurs constantly, forever. There's something, I mean, there's something very magical, but I had a great time. At the beach, we did fantasy football draft down there. And, you know, every year we do a destination draft. So my group picks a different city. Oh, dude. So I'm down there. I'm in the air traffic. I'm in the pool. They had a, you know, they got a swimming pool with the place. And because we just rented two kind of, I mean, this shit was pretty seedy, I thought. Like you could hear a couple of gun pops go off at night. You know, and some dude in our group that's kind of rich, he's like, oh, man, they, I think they have fireworks right around the corner. And I'm like, dude, people don't die during fireworks, bruh, you know? A couple, you know, a man, and a, a man ain't losing his watch and wallet during a fireworks display, okay? So that's somebody popping off. 
That's somebody taking what's not theirs. That's somebody cheating somebody out with a little bit of that pistola. That's somebody using that gun play. But it's funny how rich people always think crime is like fireworks. Like, oh, didn't know, uh, didn't know there was fireworks tonight. I've been working too long at the. Um, I didn't read in the uh, in the newsletter that there was fireworks tonight. That ain't fireworks, player. That's somebody getting pop pop popped off. That's somebody stealing somebody's fucking stuff. So just being aware of that. Um, what else, man? But yeah, I thought about the roots. I was thinking about the roots of, think about when the roots go through soil, new soil when you repot a plant. That must be a crazy time for a root, right? Getting that fresh hit of those new vitamins, getting out there into that new soil, doing that reachy, reachy, just cupping dirt, just f- and literally, literally finger banging the earth. That's what so, that's what roots are. When you think about the joy, when you take a plant out of wherever it is and repot it into a new place or into a new ground, that thing, the roots just come out like that, and they're finger banging the freaking universe. And you can't say that they're not. That's all they're doing. They reaching, they reaching for that yeech, you know. They reaching for that. Mm, they trying to cup that gup. Wow, boy, when you think about that. So if you want to really, you know, if you, you know, I'm not saying that you need to get into pornography or plantnography or anything like that. But if you want to really think about doing something naughty, take a plant and put it in some new soil. And then just sit in the distance and have you a little bit of sweet tea, you know, and just think about the the lewd activity occurring down beneath your feet. And that's Mother Nature. Um... Yeah, but I'm trying to just, uh, I want to get back to the roots of what's going on with this podcast. And not that we've been leaving them, but it's like, if you don't check, I'm just learning this. If you don't check in with yourself, you don't, if you don't check in with what's going on, then it changes, you know, and you can lose it. You know, and I was talking to, um, to one of our other producers the other day, uh, Chris Perez, and he handles, you know, he handles a lot of the outreach, he handles a lot of the single mom stuff, um... You know, a lot of the calls that have come in, he's handled for a long time and listened to a lot of those and just double checked and gone through. And he's done just, you know, a lot of great stuff for the podcast. And, you know, he's just, we're having a conversation. He's just reminding me about, uh, just about things that matter a lot. You know, and just, you know, making sure we check in with what's going on here. Um, I do want to let you know, this, look, this is, uh, this is not an ad. Actually, this is something. This is a something I want to let you know. This is really just really swaggy to me. Um, you know, I tried to lose. I, didn't, I wasn't trying to lose weight, but I was trying to get healthier a while back. And I tried a couple different meal plans. Some of them were cool. You hear a lot of them advertised on different podcasts. Um, but one that I found that really worked for me was called Catered Fit. And so I just reached out to them and I said, "Look, man, I love. I lost a ton of weight. I didn't want to lose any weight. I was just trying to get into the paleo diet, and they offered it." And, um, and I was just like, I, I want to share people about your company. I want to share your company because it's super helpful. It's only available in South Florida, Tampa, Orlando, and Southern California, unfortunately, but they're hoping to expand. And it's uh, just go to cateredfit.com and, um, and use the code Theovon, T-H-E-O-V-O-N, and you can receive $25 off your first meal plan. I'll tell you the one that I did, and I didn't want to lose it. I didn't plan on losing any weight. But this, I lost a lot of weight. So if you're wanting to lose weight, I'm thinking, well, man, this could be helpful to people that want to lose weight. I did the paleo choices from Catered Fit, and uh, and it helped. Man, I, I, they send you the meals. The meals are already cooked. It's already made. It's already, they deliver them to you the night before. And so you get up in the morning, you got your three meals, bang, 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 and that's it. That's it. And my habits changed. My eating habits changed. What I desired of what was tasty to me changed. And I've gotten off it since. But I, I you know, I think I did ten weeks. And um, and if you're wanting to lose weight, go check it out. Caterfit.com. Use the code Theo Vaughn. Um, so it's I, I, it's one of those things where it's like sometimes, you know, we get presented a lot of companies now to advertise, and some of them it's like, nah, this shit ain't, this ain't helpful. You know, we ain't doing like somebody's like, oh, they're gonna let you do uh. Uh, appendectomy through the mail, you know, some of this shit. We ain't, nobody's taking their appendix out via the mail, bruh. 
You know, they send you a scalpel and you use the scalpel and for it's ten dollars a month and you mail it back with a picture of your the incision. Then they send you what to do next. Like, dude, I ain't waiting a fucking three weeks to find with an open wound to find out how you could help me get my appendix out. So some of the stuff is just it's too much. What else? What else is going on? Oh man, I you know, I've been um I've been, I, uh, you know, we used to talk a lot, you know, I, I guess I always talk about jerk, masturbation, things I struggle with over the years, but um, I'd been doing good. I'd had, excuse me, I'd had two weeks, almost, I'd had 10 days, honestly, of, of uh, no, maybe I'd had almost two weeks of no masturbations. And, you know, doing that self-pleasure and, you know, um, touching yourself with your own hands, that sort of thing. You know, rubbing on your body until, you know, enjoyable fluids and feelings come out, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about, self-pleasure. And I'd been doing self-pleasure uh, for a while. And for me, it was always an uncom- you know, it was great, but it, whatever, long story, but anyway, I'd gone two weeks, man, and 10 days, something like that, and then of no pornography. I've had two weeks of no pornography. For me, that's good, man. Two weeks of no pornography at all. And, you know, I got these blockers now on my computer and my phone, and I didn't have that. I don't think I had that much of a problem with it, but the blockers help. Only one time in that two weeks have I even wanted to experience any pornography, and I couldn't do it. And so it was just that one moment of, okay, I can't do it right now. Whew, what a saving grace. I'm glad. Because a minute later, I don't feel like doing it. You know, I get back to myself. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy how like the the desire to like do something like, it just comes in like an instant. Like I want to not, like all, all day I don't think about doing no masturbation or anything or anything wild. You know, I'll see my penis all day and I won't even, I won't even look twice at it. But at night, you start to feel that weight between your legs. You start feeling that lurker. And it's like, damn, boy, my penis wants to do something. Or something inside of me wants to do something. And that's when I start thinking about, you know, doing self-pleasure or something. And I don't want to do it. You know, I just at the point where I don't, it's just, I'm tired of that. You know, I want to get my chi up and, and stay, stay woke inside of my nuts and inside of my brain. Uh, because I haven't had the healthiest relationship with it, but I'd gone two weeks, and then what happened was, here's where I messed up. For me, I didn't mess up overall. I'm not a bad person. I'm not saying that. Here's where I messed up for me was uh, sexual texting. Sexual texting. And sexual texting is when somebody who you don't know or maybe do know or maybe don't even know Send you a picture of they butthole or they, you know, or they cock or something like that. Or they might draw a face or put a little bit of a beard and, on their nuts and send you that fucking, you know, that nut Santa. You know, or put a little gift next to their balls and send you that, you know, you know, and send you that nut Santa or something. Or they may dress, dress you know, they may dress their vagina up to look like a little, uh, you know, like a little, um... You know, like a little, uh, you know, kind of like a little bit of a, kind of a large mouth catfish that just put on some lipstick or something. You know, people do tricks like that with their genitalia and they send you the picture and then you get excited. So I'd been doing well, but then I got a couple of sexual textings from people, from women. I think women, I don't know, one of them I think was just butt, might have just been some buttocks. So who knows, boy? You know what I'm saying? You never know, boy. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? You don't know, boy. Them cheeks, boy. They was just, you know, somebody's feeling weak in the cheeks and they start sharing that stuff. But, uh, but yeah. And so next thing you know, I got caught up and, and then I was caught up. So, so I got to, now I got to monitor that because if I do, if I let, if I get set, if I, so I'm just going to have to be weary of that. If I get sexual texts, you know, visual type of stuff, then that can lead me to break my little goals that I want for myself, you know, that I want to do or not do. And for me right now, that kind of stuff is, you know, I don't want to do, I don't want to look at pornography and I don't want to masturbate just because. 
you know, I don't want to do that, dude. Um, but yeah, I had a great time, the fantasy draft. You know what I was thinking too, man? I was thinking this weekend, like, I don't like, I, you know, I never really liked like being part of like a group, you know? I started realizing that I was thinking about it. Like, I don't like, there's something inside of me. I don't want to be part of a group. And I don't know where that starts. You know, I don't really know where that starts. Like, I don't want to be part of a, like, if I'm part of a group, then, then I'm not an individual. And I think, you know, somewhere probably in my life, like, you know, maybe when I was real, a child, or very, you know, small Nino or whatever, that, you know, I felt like probably alone. And so I felt like, oh, I have to be, I have to take care of myself. I have to be an individual. You know, I can't join a group. You know, I can't, uh, and you know, and I struggle these days. One of the smallest groups I have trouble being a part of is a relationship and being in a committed relationship, man. I've just, and that's one of the reasons why, I, you know, I, I'm trying to get away from the watching the pornography and doing the, um, masturbations and all of that, because I want to be, you know, I think I'd like to be able to one day be in a healthy, committed relationship and it's hard. It's, for me, it's been very hard. I'm not saying it's hard for a lot of people. But for me, man, it's been really, really hard. And the thing that's been the hardest when I look back in my life is really the commitment. It's commitment to anything. Dude, I never wanted to commit. And I don't know why that is. And maybe some of the listeners would even know better than I would. You know? I don't know why I don't want to commit, you know? You know, the commitment has been the toughest. That's what's been the toughest when I look back in my lifeline and my timeline of being alive and being a human is just, uh, I'm taking the headphones off because I find that for me with the head, uh, sorry, when I put the headphones on, I don't, I don't know. I feel more closed off sometimes. Um, but yeah, the commitment, I've ne I just have a tough time with it. I think is when I, you know, if I commit to something, then I'm, I'm, in trusting that I'm not going to be the one solely to take care of myself. And I think somewhere inside of myself, like a long time ago, even if I didn't know, probably, probably didn't even know that I did it, but somewhere inside of myself, my brain or my heart or both of them made promises to each other that they would never, they would never, like alienate each other or something. Like they would never let my happiness be dependent upon somebody else, if that makes any sense. I'm trying to feel this and talk about it at the same time. Because I think that's part of one of the things when I'm talking about like getting back to the roots of this thing is like, like when things get busy, you start thinking. It's, it's hard to feel when things get busy. You start thinking instead of feeling. And, and I rather, and a lot of this podcast was founded on feelings and being able to feel feelings and, uh, and talk about them and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I just want, I want to be able to, I don't want to lose that comfortability here. And so, so I guess that's just something that I'm, I'm not working on it, but I'm trying to be cognizant of it. Uh, and I guess I feel like sometimes I can't. I need to be thinking and be quick and it's hard to feel and be quick at the same time. You know, feelings for me sometimes take a little bit. But I, you know, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't want to somewhere in my life or sometime, at, you know, when I was young or some, you know, when I was in adolescence or before that, when, I'm, when my, the being, my being was being, you know, I was learning about nurturing or whatever or growing up that I, you know, my brain and my heart probably made a promise. They were unhappy and they made a promise to each other that they would never, they would never let our happiness depend on anyone but, but each other, but us, but me. So that that way they would never be hurt. You know, if I don't let you, if I don't commit, if I don't go all in, then... I'm always, if I always got to, 
a hook over here on the on the ledge, then I'll then I'm always in control. You know, then I always have a way out. I always have a you know, I always have a, a way to. I'm always, you know, I'm always not. I'm always not. I'm trying to feel this and say it at the same time. I'm sorry if I'm going slow here. If I, yeah, if I don't, if I don't, you know, if I always, you know, if I'm in a relationship, but I'm always, or if I'm in anything and I'm always, or, or fuck. Fuck, man, I'm disappointed that I can't figure this out. And now I'm, you know, now I'm feeling like I have to hurry because, because there's more listeners to the podcast now than when we started, honestly. And, yeah, and I don't like that. I'm happy that there are, you know, but I don't like, I don't want to not be able to share what and learn about my what I'm thinking about at the same time here. So I guess sometimes I'm not going to talk as quickly and get things out as quickly because then I can't feel about what I'm saying. And what I'm saying right now, but yes, you know, like, so anyway, I don't, maybe I'm not even making sense here. So what happened with me was, you know, I have had trouble being in a committed relationship. You know, I've been in relationships. And when I think back in relationships in my life, um, Dude, every relationship I've ever been in, I have been dishonest in. Um, and now I'm at a point in my life where I don't really, I don't want that anymore. I mean, I know people are going to make mistakes in relationships. I know we're all, we are all, um, you know, we're all broken, regular, normal, uh, fractured uh, humans. We're all not perfect. We're all mortal, mortal, I think it's called, immortal one or the other we're all one or the other and that we're gonna do that you know but like i don't want to i just don't want to be i don't want to be i don't want to do that kind of stuff anymore i don't want to be in in a relationship or an environment where i can't where i'm a, where i'm just so afraid of commitment that i'm you know lying or being dishonest or you know i mean uh or you know cheating or acting out or doing any of that kind of stuff i just don't want to do it you know, because I feel like as a, in my heart that I don't want to be that person. But I think I get in relationships and then I'll get, you know, I don't want to commit. That's what I started realizing. It's like the commitment. Man, the commitment is, uh, is, is the heavy part. You know, I don't want to commit. Because if I commit, then if I, if I go... I think because something, you know, I don't know when that kind of stuff occurred in my life or, you know, what happened. But at some point, I get it was probably, it's, you know, it says formidable years, you know. And at some point, I just was like, I, no, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not. I'm always going to be in control of if I feel okay or not. That's what it is. I'm always going to be in control of if I feel okay or if I don't feel okay. And no, I'm never giving anybody that power. Because I think when I was growing up, you know, I don't know when, but whenever that before I even knew, I was, before I even knew about it, that other people had that power and they, as far as I was concerned, I guess they let me down. You know, they let me down. And so I never felt okay. I never felt like it was okay to do, to let somebody else be in control of if I feel if I feel happiness. And so that's what I'm at now in my life. And I don't want to be like that. You know, so I have to figure out, you know, what goes on with me that whenever I get it, you know, where, how do I battle these commitment things? And, and, uh, and one of the things that I would do, I've noticed over time is if I, when I start to get like a, like, you know, when I get in committed relationships, I, I don't feel you know, I don't have a lot of my sexual desires go away when I'm in a committed relationship with that person. I still have sexual desires, you know. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'll fucking, I'll eat your stepsister's armpits out, boy. You know what I'm saying? Behind the post office, baby boy, you feel me? I'll do that, you know, I'll be that dirty dancer. 
You know what I'm saying? I'll pull that tongue out and Billy Elliot all up in your stepsister's armpits, cat daddy. Even after she worked a double over there. Even after she worked a double over there at the um at the Safeway grocery. So I'm saying we know who's who. When I'm over there, you know, she done dampened up them, you know, them oyster holes on one, you know, them underarm, them oyster holes. Them armpits, she done dampened them things up after working a double over there at the Kroger. And then this daddy, you know, snap dragon with that wild freaking, you know, that tongue. Go over there and polish them little bad kittens up. So I'm saying I still got them sexual desires, but if I am in a committed relationship, then I lose them. And I think part of it is because I don't want to, if I get, if I, if I, if I, if I nurture that, like I just, there's something in me that doesn't want to connect, like doesn't want to, doesn't want to lead things, doesn't want to lead a relationship even further and connect even further because uh, I'm just afraid that I'm going to, something, I don't know, that I'm just afraid. I guess it's just fear. But the crazy thing is the fear is not even, it's not in my head really, it's like inside of me somewhere. It's like my, it's like just the parts of me don't want to fucking be like that. So anyway, so now I got to start to figure out, you know, how I can better get to a place where I can commit to somebody. Um, and so that's kind of some of what's going on in my life. So if you hear about me talking about things like that or little pieces, a lot of it, I don't know what it is. You know, I'm still trying to figure it out, but I'm taking steps now to try and try and just battle that kind of shit, man. You know, and I'm not blaming, you know, I'm not blaming my parents or anything like that. Like, you know, this, some of this stuff could have been their parents or some of their stuff could, it comes down the line, man. You know, you know, I can't expect my mother to have loved me perfectly. If somebody didn't love her perfectly, where's she going to learn it? She don't just know that she, you know, so that kind of stuff makes me. But I don't want that shit to go on to my kids. If I have kids one day, or I don't want that stuff to go on to my kids. You know, I don't want that. I want that shit to stop here. I want it to stop with me. You know, if my family struggles with depression or this kind of stuff, I want to, because I, I believe you can beat the, we can beat these things genetically, but we have to fight them. So I'm going to be out in the streets, man. I want to be out in those emo streets, you know? Um... And those are things that we talked about uh, and we still do talk about on this podcast. But if you can relate to any of that kind of stuff or you struggle with that kind of stuff, hit the hotline, 985-664-9503. You know, I'm willing to explore this more. You don't have to leave your name. Uh, you can, you don't, you know, whatever you want to do. But I want, you know, I want to be able to, for us to, this still to be a place where we can talk about um, things that we're thinking and feeling and things that we're not sure about, but that we're trying to learn. Um, and this is, you know, when I think about it, dude, so this is some of the stuff that's scary to me than anything. Like I've, you know, I haven't had, uh, you know, for a couple of years now, I haven't had a problem, you know, I've, I've struggled, but I haven't had that much of a problem giving up drugs and alcohol. But, uh, but giving up, but giving someone 100% accessibility to my feelings and my heart and that kind of shit, phew, that, that, that is my Vietnam, bro. That sounds like the scariest thing in the world to me. It's interesting. It's interesting being alive, dude. It's interesting. You know, it's interesting being a part of this magic that's created when the water and the sands collide. Uh, we had a lot of video uh, questions that came in. I'm going to get to some of those. We had a lot of audio questions. We had, a, we had some audio questions that came in. I'm going to get to some of those. Um, and I'm going to get to them right now. Also want to let you know about my date. So coming up, we got Nashville. Uh, we also have Toronto, but I'm not sure about Toronto. So we're figuring that out right now. If you already bought tickets, you might be able to get a re reimbursement. Um, you know, I'm just trying to make a fair, I'm trying to make this deal a fair deal. And they, and you know, with this group over there and, uh, and so we're trying, we're going to figure it out. Um, but I appreciate you guys' patience, patience. So just hold a beat on that. 
Uh, and that's for the Just for Last Festival in Toronto. Otherwise, I'll be coming to Appleton, Buffalo, Salt Lake City, and Washington, D.C. You can get those at theovon.com slash tour, T-O-U-R. Um, let's take a phone call or two and see what happens, man. Here we go. What's up, Theo? You crawfish king, you. I just- Ooh, them little snappers, boy, them crawfish. You know what I'm saying? Crawfish, boy, that's like... uh. They basically ditch, they're basically, crawfish are basically fucking ditch gophers. More? Quick question regarding uh, working on jokes and how comedians work together. Do you guys brainstorm? Do you run it past any of your friends? And on the flip side, are you worried about people ever trying to sabotage you? Is there, what what does the competition look like there? Do you guys help each other out or are there people that uh, try and bring each other down? Uh, that's a good question. Thank you for calling, man. I appreciate it, uh, young man. This is, And if you're on the YouTube, you can see the video. These are video questions that come in. You can submit video questions uh, through our fan line, and there's a link on YouTube and iTunes, or you can submit video questions through theovon.com slash, I don't know what it is, it's wherever the podcasts are, but there's a drop box. You can just send a video in, and uh, in the video, you'll be on the video YouTube. You can see the human. This is a man. He's wearing a gray shirt. He's got a beard, and he looked pretty healthy to seem like a healthy man. But he is asking us about uh, comedians helping each other. There are some comedians that help each other. Um, The funniest thing I find is when you let other people make fun of you, that's when you can really learn some insights into yourself and how people see you. Because unless you know how people see you and how the world kind of sees you, then it's hard to know what's if your perception of yourself is a little off, then you might not be, your jokes, it might not be, uh, your jokes that might not be as easily perceived as funny by your audience. So I think a lot of comedians are helpful if you ask some people. Some people are kind of know-it-alls. I don't like that. Um, you know, I want to be, my goal whenever I started doing comedy was I want people to remember me. You know, I just want to be able to share myself. I don't care. There's a lot of writers out there and that kind of thing. If you're a joke writer, that's cool. It's great. But that's not that's not my favorite type of entertainment. You know, I'd rather see somebody running from an animal that's chasing them, running from a dangerous animal. Or I'd rather see somebody that is um, an entertainer uh, that is, you know, when I'm watching them, I'm getting... Because a writer, I could watch a writer on stage. I could just, anybody could tell a writer's jokes. Like they made them up, so I respect that, the authorship of them. But for me, I like to see an entertainer. I like to see a personality. That's what I'm saying. And so that's what I try to exude up there more these days is to really just, you know, let my heart get out through my work. You know, because that's the interesting thing about our heart is our heart, our heart only has so many ways to get out of us, you know. Because our heart really wants to get out into the world. And you'll even notice that with your blood. Think about your heart. Your heart pumps blood away from you. It pumps blood away from it. And that's love, man. That's Your heart is just trying to love, just trying to get out into the world. And that's really, that. that's crazy to think that a heart has so much, that all it wants to do is just push, you know, that love out into the world. And that's what it does with your blood. It just pushes, but then the blood only, you're limited. You're limited within your body, so the blood has to come back. You know, you got cul-de-sacs. Your arms and legs are basically just, you know, long, just basic cul-de-sacs. But that's a good question, man. Some are helpful, some aren't. Um, I keep, you know, these days with storytelling, it's like nobody can take your away you. So don't be afraid to be you. And I think that just resonates across a lot of uh, walks, of lo- a lot of uh, spaces in life. If you're being authentic to yourself, then nobody can take that. They can't take your story. You can't look at my story and tell me my story isn't real. And you can feel someone's story when they're telling it to you. You can't tell me, you tell me my story isn't real, don't take my story away from me. And that's one of the things I don't like about Hollywood sometimes, especially being out here the past few years. It's like, man, you know, when everybody's there, you know, these people are making fun of poor people and making fun of, um, you know, calling all white people racist and calling all of this and saying that, you know, people from the middle of the country or certain parts of the country aren't worthwhile. And don't tell me that kind of stuff. That's not right because that's my whole life. Don't tell me that my life doesn't have any value 
because uh, yes, I'm not perfect. Yes, I struggle. Yes, I've sinned and made a million poor choices, but I want to, but I'm not giving up on myself. So that kind of shit made me mad, man. So that's why I want to get even more authentic. You're going to come at me with this bullshit and all that, you know, Hollywood sometimes makes up all this shit. They think they're authentic. They don't, they don't have, any, they're lacking authenticity. And that just make me want to just be more myself. Because you can't fucking stop. You can't stop whatever. You can't stop authentic stuff. And people can feel it. They can resonate it. That's the human condition, baby. That's that hotline. That's that human fucking wire, bruh. And you know when somebody else is on it. It's a, it's a look you get when you look somebody in the eyes. And you know that they're telling you something. And you know they're feeling something. That's the instinct, son. If you need me, I'll be on that fucking instinct state. That's the interstate for instincts. And that's what I'm trying to ride right now. You know? I just don't want to... I just don't want to get... I, I just... I'm tired of being bullshitted. But uh, let's hear more, man. Another call that came in here. This is uh, from the video calls. Onward. All right, it's gone. Hey, what up, Theo? This is Josh and Emilio. We're from Palmdale, California. We have a serious question to ask you. Okay, this is Josh and Emilio from Palmdale, California. And uh, thank you guys for calling. And these guys, if you can't see them on the video and you're listening on audio, um, one of them have short hair, one of them longer hair. Uh, they look like they could be in a band. They also could be two dudes that work at Quiznos, but are the happiest Quiznos workers you've ever met. They seem like joyous uh, young gents. Onward. So we were uh, just talking about the woman in Oklahoma who got mauled to death by seven wiener dogs a couple weeks ago. Woo. And that's gang activity. <clears throat> and you think, here's the crazy thing. You'd think they'd have gone after somebody with a wiener. Seven of them went after a lady with no wiener. And that's reverse psychology. And a lot of animals, what you don't realize is, you know, two animals, they get together, they might have an idea. Oh, let's sneak out the doggy door. Three animals, maybe, to be like, oh, let's, you know, let's jump up on the cupboard and steal grandma's uh, chicken pot pie. Four animals, they might be like, oh, you know. Let's sneak out at night and get some fucking cocaine, you know? Five, five animals get together. Five wiener dogs get together. And they might be like, oh, man, this shit is fucking... Let's buy some pistols, you know? Let's buy some guns, you know? Let's buy some... Let's buy some fucking guns, bro. And let's pop off, baby. But six dogs get together like, oh, you know? Let's embezzle money. Let's build a YMCA and get donations and fucking take some money out of the coffers, you know? We'll, let's say we're getting swimsuits for the new YMCA swim team, but let's steal some of that money. But seven animals get together, and they're going to probably just take a bitch down for no reason. What I'm saying is that's groupthink. That's dirty groupthink. And that's unnecessary, man. So if you see a bunch of animals getting together and you think it's funny and shit like that and it's Care Bears and all of that, maybe it's not. You know, this ain't Babe Pig in the City and other animals. This is seven wiener dogs getting... First of all, who even let seven wiener dogs get together and didn't think something was happening? Dude, I never fucking seen... I never seen seven wiener dogs in the same state before. So you're telling me whoever owned them didn't know that some kind of shit was going on? That other wiener dogs are stopping by to visit their wiener dog? Or they're all meeting? You go to the, you take your wiener dog to the park and, you know, one week there's two wiener dogs there and the next week there's three and then a month later there's four. And then there's, two, you know, seven, two of them that aren't on leashes and you're like, well, you don't notice something's fucking going on? Let's hear more. I'm sorry for getting upset. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. And we, it's not funny. It's not. It's a serious matter. <laughs> and uh, we. And were, one of the boys is laughing in the back. And this seemed like the boy, this the long haired gentleman. Onward. Just uh, wondering, how many wiener dogs do you think you could take? Say if they were attacking you, like it took I think seven to kill her. How many could mm. you take before they ended up taking your life? And thank you for the question, man. Uh, I would say four. I feel comfortable saying four. I would probably say three. 
If I'd eaten recently and I had a couple Gatorades or something on a table nearby, I would say four. But you think about, dude, when it gets up to five wiener dogs, and a lot of guys out there be like, I could take all seven. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't, dude. Because they hadn't. First of all, a woman couldn't take all seven. And they got some tough ladies out there. So a man, you get, look. And women are, look, they'll fight, women will fight to the end. You know five wiener dogs, one of them is going to sneak you up and get you by the neck. And the hard part for some men is going to be feeling all that wiener against them. And that's the trick about a wiener dog is. You know, they, they get enough of that body against you and it feels like big wieners hitting you. And next thing you know, one of them gets you right up in the gullet. And you're necked out. And you've been wienered out. But yeah, I would say four. I think I could successfully defend myself against four wiener dogs. And look, I'm not trying to challenge any wiener dogs. If you out there, if somebody's out there caught up in the dark arts, you out there training WDs in your fucking basement and shit, and you got these little things going through hoops and eating heavy treats and stuff to make their neck stronger, don't come at me with that shit. I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm just saying I think I could take four. Thank you for calling in. Um, I do appreciate that, man. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's hear, what else, man? We got some other calls that have come in. Let's hear one, man. Let's hear one right here. Sorry, onward. Hey, Theo, listening to your podcast from the country of Georgia. All right, from the country of Georgia. Wow, thank you for calling uh, in from the country of Georgia. And I'll tell you this funny story uh, very quickly. I once got propositioned... Um, by the country of Georgia to host their, it was basically like a night of, like a dancing with the stars. It was a one night thing. Um, I think a two day show that would air nationally in their, in their country. And, um, and I couldn't do it. I had, I had something else I had to do, but I was going to fly to Georgia and host their national, uh, I don't, A, A, don't even know where Georgia is. Okay, and I'm not talking Atlanta. A lot of you guys are like, "Well, it's uh, it's just over there by 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 damn South Carolina." No, I'm talking about Georgia, the country. Uh, and B, I would have hosted their national. All their celebrities would have been performing. It would have been absolutely ridiculous. But I couldn't do it, and it's one of my, the biggest regrets of my life, actually. But let's hear more. Thank you for calling. Far east side of the Europe. Far Eastern side of Europe. There we go. We are answered. Onward. I want to thank you for the motivation because I'm also fighting an addiction, winning a battle already. Uh, you're welcome, man. And um, he said, I want to thank you for fighting an addiction and, uh, and, and that we are winning the battle already. Onward. Just sometimes I get too upset and like uh, sad about life being sober all the time. So, like, like if the happiness isn't real, you know. We'd like to hear from you. What do you do to recover yourself from sudden attacks of depression? You know, sometimes there are those days when you just feel like you're just wasting your time, something like that. Not always, thank God, but sometimes it happens. Thank you. I love you. You're a great guy. Thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you for the call, brother. I, I didn't catch your name at the beginning. I don't know if you gave it. Hey, Theo, listening to your podcast from the country of Georgia. And you didn't give us your name. Uh, but thank you for calling. Um, what do I do? Well, you know, I'm pretty blessed these days because I know I have a couple people. But well, first of all, here's what I do. I wake up in the morning now, and I'm back on my gratitude list. So I wake up in the morning, and, you know, I put my serenity prayer in, into the world. I write it down on a page. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, and sometimes, dude, honestly, most of the time, whenever I say that prayer, I can't even hear it. I just say it, I write it down, and it doesn't even resonate. I don't think about it the rest of the day. I don't know if it comes into my life or not. I don't think so sometimes. But, but I'm hoping that one day I'll have done that enough that it'll – that anything that comes in my life, I will think, first of all, can I change this? Can I not? And then, then I will put that prayer into action. 
But then I make a gratitude list. I think of 10 things that I'm grateful for. Um, and they can be anything, man. You know what? I'm going to get my bag right now. I'm going to read you my list really quick. I'll read to you uh, my one from this morning. This is this morning's. So I woke up in Mexico this morning. I said, I'm grateful to have seen some of my friends this weekend. That's one thing on my gratitude list. Uh, I am grateful to have been safe all weekend. Uh, I am thankful to be breathing today. I am happy for my arms and legs. I am grateful to have my family. I am thankful for the sunshine. That's five things right there. I'm grateful for my ability to uh, make and and feel laughter. I'm grateful for my nieces and nephews all started school uh, this week. I am thankful for this chair. I think I remember I was sitting in a nice chair. This is this morning. I'm grateful for my clean-ish apartment that I will be going home to. Um, I am thankful to hopefully be part of the solution. That's just my list, man. I didn't plan on reading that. Uh, but that's my list from today. So I'll make a gratitude list. So then it, it, suddenly my brain is, has a little bit more of gratitude. So I'm, instead of thinking about worry, I'm thinking about gratitude. And then what I do is I think of three other people to call. Um, and here's where I was getting to your answer about the depression when I started to feel depressed. You know, I have three other people, you know, I'll call anybody. Anybody I think that can use a phone call. It could be a family member to check in. It could be somebody else that's in you know, one of the programs that I'm in so I can check in with them. Um, it could be somebody who lost, uh, you know, lost a job or somebody's waiting on good news. It could be anything. Just check in with somebody who's not myself. Because my problem is I am, in the long run, I'm addicted to myself. In the long run, I um, had to take care of myself for so much in so many ways that I'm just, I'm too used to it. So I need to think about other people. So getting outside of myself helps me. And so then to get to your, your, to answer your question, brother, what I'll do is I'll check in. So now I have people that I'm always checking in with from you know my morning check-ins that I'll just reach out to one of them if I'm not feeling good. I'll also take action. You have to take action. You have to take action. Put your foot in front of the other foot. You know, we just shared a cartoon on Instagram this week from Jocko Willink, um, who's an inspirer. You know, uh, Jordan Peterson's been here. He's an inspirer. Uh, Tate Fletcher. You know, you have to stay moving, and you have to get vertical, and uh, and you can always help others, man. You know, you can always help others, and that will make you feel. You, you, there's no way you cannot feel good if you're helping somebody else. It's impossible. You know, that's one of the gifts of the world, man. Is that that we can find the way outside of ourselves by finding the way into someone else. And that is not a me too. That is not a hashtag me too thing or a time's up. I don't mean find your way into somebody else by, you know, find somebody that's sleeping at the bus stop and hide one of your fingers in a raise. I'm talking about by just, uh, by just helping somebody. That's how we can do it. But look, man, I'll let you know this, dude. Don't feel alone today. Because you're in Georgia, bro. Dude, can you imagine, dude, in Georgia, if I would have been there on a television show? Oh, and here was the crazy thing. They would have made me learn to dance. I would have had to learn to dance. And that was another problem. I was scared. There was like It was like six weeks away. And the lady's like, can you ballroom dance? And I was like, fuck yeah, I can. Because I was trying to get that paper, you know, stack that Georgian, you know, whatever money you guys use over there. That Rambot or whatever it's called. Or young, you know, that young dang or whatever. So she's like, can you ballroom dance? So, dude, I had I was going to learn to ballroom dance in six weeks for a ne- ah, I cannot even imagine how poorly that would have gone. But I would love to come to your country one day, and I hope that I get to. And, uh, and just don't feel depressed today, man, you know? Don't feel depressed today, bro. Uh, and I appreciate you making me think about, you know, things that make me feel better. But I stay active. I get moving. I get vertical. Because your brain isn't even supposed to function horizontally. Think about it. When you lay your brain down, that's, your brain doesn't work on its side. Your brain works when it's upright. So at the very least, sit upright and get moving. I notice when I get moving, everything gets moving. Um, and, I, and I then learn that I'm a lot more capable than I thought I was. Uh, but you have to take action. You can't stay. You cannot stay 
when I get out of get up in the morning, my brain starts wanting to do bad. It don't it don't want to do anything. It just wants me to worry. <clears throat> but I don't want to worry, and I beat my brain to the punch. Uh, but thank you for calling, man. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Let's hear uh, another call that came in. The hotline is nine eight five six six four nine five zero three. Hey Theo, just wondering um, how much process goes into your actual podcast, how much editing, how much writing, how much uh, prep do you do? Because you seem to have a, a grip on the show really well. I'm not, I was curious how much just off the cuff you do. My name's Jason from Flint. Hey, Jason from Flint. And y'all might know my cousin Daddy Longneck is from up there in Flint as well. And that's Dirty Water Country, boy, DWC. I will drink your milkshake. Oh, no, I won't. Uh, thank you for calling, dude. I appreciate it calling in, Jason from Flint. Um, how much prep? Not super much, really, honestly. I mean, I think about it a lot. I try and connect with my feelings. Like today, I really made a point to try and connect with my feelings before I got on and start the podcast. You know, and I wrote some stuff down on the plane ride home, some things I wanted to talk about, listen through the calls. Um, and then some of the calls I don't listen through because I want them to be new to me. But I do talk with my producer, Nick, about um, about the types of things we want to uh, keep in the program, the types of things that are important to me and the types of things that are going on in my life. Um, because I feel like if there's stuff going on in my life uh, – and then he can listen to the calls, and he's like, oh, some of these things are kind of things you're thinking about or dealing with or whatever, then you can, and I'm current on it in my own emotions, then I might be able to best, you know, be of service by thinking out loud to other people that might be sh dealing with or thinking about some of the same stuff. So that's where I, you know, I try and do that. Um, but a lot of stuff I think of just off the cuff. You know, I don't want to be too planned or prepared. You know, we do have now... You know, our uh, in-house producer, Nick, makes the sheets, so there are ads, so I can see the ads right here, um, and so that's kind of nice just to have those, um, but I would say that that's probably a lot of it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to let you right know, know right now about this ad. This is called Sane Box, and dude, I need this, man. I'm going to try this out. I have not tried this out yet, but inbox uh, mail is, inbox email is just bananas. And, you know, we had a mailman come on, you know, he just called in a few minutes ago. And mailman, that's the, that's the original email. You know, but, um, but inboxing email is crazy. And now uh, it, it, we're so inundated with email that it's no longer about responding to everything. And it's true. You don't want to respond to everything. It's about responding only to important things, the messages that truly matter. And SaneBox, S-A-N-E-B-O-X, does the work for you. SaneBox, sifting only the important emails in your inbox and directing all other distracting stuff into your Sane Later folder. So you know what messages to pay attention to and what stuff to get to later on. It also has nifty features like the Sane Black Hole, where you can drag messages from annoying senders you never want to hear from again. That sounds like something that's amazing to me. They also have Sane Reminders to ping you if someone hasn't replied to your email by a certain date. So that's pretty cool, too, if you need to circle back with someone. I am offering to our listeners, you can see how Sane Box can magically remove distractions from your inbox with a two-week uh, two free trial. Visit SaneBox.com slash Theo today to start your free trial and receive a $25 credit. That's S-A-N-E-B-O-X dot com slash Theo for a two-week free trial and to receive a $25 credit. Pretty cool. Um, let's take another call that came in. Uh, here we go. Uh, here we go. Hey, yo, Theo. This is uh, Sam down here in Texas. I'm a big fan. I listen to all your podcasts. Thank you for listening, Sam, uh, down in Texas. Onward. I relate to you on a lot of different levels and stuff. We're about the same age. Um, so, you know, I have a lot of the same things going on that you do uh thanks for saying that sam i appreciate it man um i appreciate it onward anyway uh so i'm calling about your take on deer hunting buddy as a lifelong hunter i think that i'm both offended and inspired first of all there's no sharing a deer stand with motherfucking stanley there's no wieners involved in deer camp in any way but here's what i'm saying is 
you can't get into a deer stand and leave your dick in the car. That's all I'm saying. Thank you for calling, though. Let's hear more. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very interested, though, in your challenge um, uh, as far as uh, the spoon, regulation spoon. But what are the regulations on the knife? I mean, are we talking like a sword, a pocket knife, um, something in between? Uh, you know, you really need to uh, – it would be good if you could get back and, and let us know what the regulations are on that because uh, I'm planning on getting that uh, knife kill, that knife kill hitter. Dang, boy. Dude, I'll say this, man. If you get out there. So the knife, I think a sword. Dude, if you kill a fucking deer or what else? A kangaroo, a strong kangaroo. You know, or at least a, a kangaroo that's probably 13 years or older. Nothing. Don't kill a damn child kangaroo. But, um, yeah, if you kill a deer with a sword, bro. Or a leopard. Do you kill a leopard with a sword, bro, in the wild? Um, I'll give you $550, bro. I swear to God I will. If you kill a leopard with a sword, this goes out to anybody. Leopard, what else? Leopard and any other exciting, very exciting cheetah. Um, uh, what else? Um... A hawk, not a hawk. I don't think you can legally kill a hawk. Um, but you kill an, a leopard, cheetah, or other exciting animal with a sword, $550, bruh. Um, but yeah, knife, I think you have to, you could go sword or you have to go, you have to go serious blade. Um, and the spoon, I get it. The spoon is kind of useless, I guess, unless you're really going to get out, you know, if you're going to get on its back and then, and the spoon is kind of messed up because. You know, you you know, and I know I said to spoon out an animal's eye, you know, if you already get them with that knife. But I'd love to see that. I think that's the next step in hunting. Because here's the thing, everything evolves. Everything evolves. Like a long time ago, hunters would make a trap on the ground and the thing, you know, a deer would walk into it and they'd have like an apple or a little sweet tarts or something there and the deer would eat them and the 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 the, the trap would pull the deer up into the tree by one of its legs. And then they had, you know, somebody would write something on a wall and a deer would come over and read it. And then, you know, uh, you know, a big hammer or an anvil or something would fall down and kill the deer. And then they had, you know, men started building deer stands and spending time together and then shooting deers from far, far away. But now, and look, I respect that some things are happening. Like they have bow hunting now. I get it. I'm not saying hunting is wrong. Hunt, bruh. You know what I'm saying? I mean, fuck, they got neighborhoods over in New Orleans where these boys are hunting each other. So, you know, hunting is something humans prefer to do. But at least for humans that are out there hunting animals, I would love to see that knife attack. And I think something too small, a pocket knife, very, very too much. Because you'd have to, how many, you'd have to, uh, you know, stab an animal probably, you know, 80, 90, 70, you know, 80, 90, you know, 70 times. That's going to take fucking, that could take 15 minutes, dude. And you, that's, that's insane. So what you need to do is get something, it's going to have to be a big enough knife. I would say probably eight inches, that eight inch blade, boy, maybe even probably eight inches, eight inches, I think, eight inch blade or that sword. If you want to go with that long two hander, boy. Now, if you a fucking straight up, you know, you're a woods ninja, Dude, I think this could start a whole new, much more fair way of hunting. And uh, and I appreciate your call, man. I do appreciate your call and uh, for making me think about it. And if you send me in that video, big dog, I'll send you that $550. But be safe out there. I do want you to live long. I really, really do want uh, want you to live long. Thanks for calling. Um, what else do we have here? All right, caller. All right, let's take this call right here. Thank you for hitting the hotline, Onward. Hey, Theo. My name's Josh. I'm calling you from San Diego. Hey, Josh, calling from San Diego. A lot of the guys I spent this weekend with, uh, f with my fantasy football draft was from San Diego. Um, let's hear more. Um, just wanted to bring something up here. And a, a situation going on, maybe you would have some advice on this. Maybe some other people would have some advice. But uh, I work as a graphic designer. Okay, worked as a graphic designer. Really fun job. Let's hear more. And the company I work for, 
I heard a couple of weeks ago they're going to be downsizing. Last Friday, the uh, head of the graphics. My cousin um, was, oh, I think a Down syndrome, actually. And I'm sorry, I didn't think, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything right there. Let's hear more. Apartment. You said downsizing for if people couldn't hear it. Onward. Told me kind of on the, on the download that uh, I'm the one that's going to be getting laid off. I found out that the way this company lays people off is they send them a text on Sunday evenings. Mm. Mm. Sunday evening they send it. Well, look, dude, if you had a long weekend, then that's going to be a great text to get if you was partying all weekend and you'll be happy to not have to go in on Monday. But the rest of the days after that, when you need money and employment, then that's going to struggle Tuesday through Friday and future weeks and months. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Let's hear more. So here it is, Sunday, middle of the afternoon. I'm waiting around, waiting to get this mm. text message from uh, one of the managers. And um, I just want to know your thoughts about that. Like, it's pretty lame, I think. And maybe uh, maybe how, how you would respond to that. I kind of want to say, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I'd like to talk to them face-to-face. -face. At least they could give me enough respect to, to uh, let me go and look at me in the face while they're doing it, not just send a text. Man, yeah, that's why, you know, you know what, uh, yeah, it would be nice if they did it face to face, especially if you know the people, like, I'm not sure what your employment structure is over there, you know, what your management structure is over there, but yeah, if they said, if they told you face to face, um, it also seems odd though that they don't give you two weeks notice that you just, like, uh, so, you know, there must have been, you know, Usually, if they tech, you know, if they're going to text you on Sunday night, then the, it should be something you should know, right? It, you'll be there for the next two weeks. I'm not sure how that's working for you, um, but you know, it's just the the world we are in now. It's like that. It's like that in a lot of places. And some of us, we don't want to admit it, and I don't want to admit it sometimes. Like I romanticize a lot of things. You know, I romanticize a lot of things, but a lot of the world these days is it's electronic. That's how it's going. If you want to feel about it, you want to think about it, you got to do that on your own time, buddy. You know, people, there's not as much of the connection there. And I think if anything, more than ever, this is a time when we got to, it's, it's about getting back to the family structure. It's about getting back to the people you, that have to connect with you. Family. Because it's, you know, these other, other things are not as much, there's not as much reliability in them. You know, there's not the connection you used to have at work. There's not some of those connections anymore. So, yeah, I think it's just a, it's an opportunity uh, for us to realize that, hey, you know, um, the people we care about are not the ones that we're just going to, you know, we're going to take it a step further with them. You know, we're going to connect on a real level. Um, because other places, is not they're not doing it as much. It's not as important. It's not part of the structure. You know, people work so far away. Some people are from their own offices or even uh, countries away. Your headquarters might be in a, you know, it's just so far and so distant now. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to feel like work matters that much, like, to, like they have any gratitude towards you as an employee. But maybe in a weird, you know, convoluted way that that's a reminder for us to be like, well, it's time for me to connect and make sure that I connect in a real way with the people that I care about the most. You know, and those are your parents and your little ones and your nieces and your, um, and your animals and your siblings. And, you know, just let them know you care. Look them in the eyes. Go, go spend some time with them instead of send that text, instead of send that birthday text to them or instead of send that, that Thanksgiving. Go surprise them. When was the last time you surprised a family member with a visit? Surprise somebody that you love. You know, I don't know, it's me. You're making me think my brother's birthday is coming up in two weeks, and the last thing I want to do is take another trip on a plane anywhere. Anywhere. I mean anywhere. But hearing you makes me think, man, you know, maybe I should just buzz down there and see him. You know, he's going to be 41. You know, I never thought he would be 41, you know, and I just, I don't know. And we weren't close when we were young. You know, we wanted to be close, but we didn't have the emotional ability to get close. 
um, or the opportunity. And so now here I am as an adult and I have that opportunity. And what am I going to do? I'm just going to send a text. I have, I can afford it. You know, I can I can afford it. There's been years where I couldn't afford it. So what do I do? You know, fuck. Now I've even cornered myself by talking about it and I'm making myself. Now I'm already feeling bad if I don't go. But I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry about the job. You know, and I hope that you find some other employment. You sound like you have a really good personality. You sound like an upbeat dude. You sound like a guy who thinks about things. Man, those are some great characteristics in, a, in an employee. So I bet somebody else is going to be happy to have you. And this could be an opportunity, uh, a new opportunity, just waiting to turn around the corner and say hello to you. And I hope that that's what it is, Cat Daddy. And look, if you got a couple days off, boy, you know what I'm saying, boy? Get out there, son. Get out there and fucking, I'm not saying get in the dark arts, but maybe fucking stick your dick into the gray matter, you know? I'm not saying get out there in the dark arts, but maybe fucking get out there and see what's looming around in the shadows, daddy. Do something do something unique with your days off. Do something you wouldn't do, but take action, move. Don't just sit around the house and thinking about I'm not working. Take action, move. You can do something, but I promise that you can. But thanks for calling in, man, making us th- making us feel like a part of your life. We appreciate it. Um, what else? We got another call that came in here. Let's hit the hotline, 985-664-9503. Thank you for calling. Hey, Theo. My name's David. I'm from Sacramento, California. I just found you like two weeks ago. Oh, thanks for calling, David, from Sacramento. Um... You know, I really, I, I love being up by Sacramento. Dude, I am so excited by the Diaz Poirier fight. I know that uh, I think Diaz is out of that Stockton area, but anytime I think about NorCal and them real boys in between NorCal and SoCal, um, I think about Sac Town and I think about, you know, just some of them real areas. And uh, man, I'm so excited about by that fight that I saw a promo the other day. Oh, it looks so good. Looks so good, man. I'm so. Uh, I hope that fight goes through. Let's hear more. Thank you for calling in, brother. Cover your stuff. I've been playing music for like eight years. No, like ten years. I've been playing guitar for a little longer. Basically, I'm dating a girl right now, and I really, I, I love her, you know, and everything. And um, wow, and that's cool to hear that, man. You know, it's cool to hear. You don't. You, you didn't used to hear that stuff a lot. You know, a hundred years ago, a guy couldn't tell some another guy that they that you know this girl, I love her like in an open form like this. So I think as men, we are evolving emotionally in some ways, you know. Um, maybe some ways more than we need to. I mean, look, fucking sometime I'm a little too emo out here. But thank you for calling. So you play music. And uh, did you say you play music? And she, you've been dating this girl for, uh, and you love her. Onward. She's, she's a really family-oriented type. And I love that about her. And I, I'm just worried, you know, that I, and I won't be able to like pursue music as much as like like if I get married to her too quick because I just think like being on the road and everything would be really hard because I know like I, I've done a couple tours in my life and it just takes a lot of time and kind of can't be that present and stuff and I always just imagine her coming with me and stuff I don't know have you ever been in a relationship and then always been moving around and stuff and like what's that done to it and think it's possible do you think it's like it's my head in the clouds here or, anyway uh love you love your stuff bro you're awesome you know i wish you the best i want to see you out there you should you should come through sacramento i'm going to see bill burr in a couple of weeks and if you came dude i would totally go and i'd bring all my friends so thank you man thank you for that i heard you say love you too that freudian slip boy and i love you too bro i'm just clowning with you there but um but dude, Bill Burr is one of the greats, and you go see him, and that's a real boy. Bill Burr is a real boy, man. He's out there, and he's a real dude, and he's a loving dude. And um, but he he's a real guy, you know. And I think he does a great job of staying, of being, you know, true to himself. Um, and man, I feel so blessed. Like you know, Bill said the hey to me. This is the second time he ever said hey to me. When the last time I you know I saw him the other day, and it was like, fuck, man. I mean, I just can't even believe that that's you know. And even if my life ends next week or something that for, you know, that I got to have these moments where men that I idolize and people in senses of humor that I idolize, uh, 
you know, said, he- said hello to me um, and made me feel a part of. You know, thanks for this call, man. This is a big, you know, it's really, first of all, I want to say that it's really cool of you to think about all of that. You know, you're thinking not just about yourself. You're thinking not, you're thinking about you two together. You're thinking about, um, you know, the risk. And I'll say this in my own life. You know, I've been seeing a girl for a while and I don't talk about my relationship uh, or dating and that kind of stuff on here that much anymore on the podcast because I feel like it's not fair to somebody that I'm involved with or it's not, fa- you know, because my life isn't their life. You know, my life isn't their life. Um, and, uh, and it is hard. It's hard, man, when you're just FaceTiming somebody. You know, it's harder when there's temptation around every corner and there is, um, and you feel lonely easy. Because loneliness a lot of times, and if you don't feel like uh, you don't have a good, strong sense of yourself, and and if you're just used to, like when I get lonely, then I'll do something where I, you know, I, in the past I've made choices where, you know, oh, well, I'll go, you know, you know, meet a strange woman or I'll go, uh, you know, I'll look at pornography or something like that. Something to make just, and it's not even lonely. It's just some emptiness or something. So you have to be careful of those things. Those are pitfalls, man. Cause those can damage a situation that where you really care about somebody. Um, and a lot of that stuff, I, you know, I've been able to work on some of that stuff and I continue to, but those are, those are real things out there. And will she want to come with you? You know, will you, can you still have your dream? I think here's, here's, what I, here's what I think. I think you just have to tell her these things up front. You have to say, look, if this is, you have to say, look, I love you. I'm not sure if this is the right move right now, you know, for us to be together. What do you think? Because these are the things that I'm afraid of. And that's what I've learned as I get older is the hardest thing to do. Just to tell a woman or tell somebody else. If you got a lover that's a male lover or whatever like that, or you got a, you know, you not you don't like men's or women's and you just got a puppy, you know, and you and that motherfucker just kind of look each other in the eyes a lot. But just to say what your real fears are. You know, and I should say when I get like, you know, my real fears are, you know, and I'm taking a break right now from the relationship that I was in because I'm I'm not healthy. I'm not well. I'm not able to, I'm not able. I don't know what I want. I don't know where I want to be or what I want to do. Um, and I really felt like in my, it was starting to, you know, affect the person that I was dating, affect the person. And I wasn't evil. I just, I don't know. I got so many issues when it comes to that kind of stuff. But I think if you can be transparent with them, you'd be so much more amazed. I hear... I hear from guys who have very extremely transparent relationships and extremely don't keep any worries or fears or insecurity that keep all that in the open with their partner that they, with their girl or whatever, that they sh- they find that that really helps them shine, you know? Um, but she sent a minute, she's probably a loving person. You can let her know, look, the, I'd love to, I'd love for us to have a chance. Um, these are the things that I'm worried about. If I make a wrong move, should I, do I let, you know, do I let you know, or do you like it to me to keep that to myself? I mean, these are the real things that we can ask each other and talk about, you know, because times are different now. It's like, you know, you're in a real, you know, like, like it used to be a long time ago, you would travel, but you wouldn't talk to the person. You maybe talk to them on the payphone here or there and you would miss them and you would, but now you're like missing somebody, but you don't ever really get a chance to fully miss them because there's so much accessibility. It's, it's kind of strange now. It's like, I don't know. It's kind of strange, but I would say you just try and be honest. Just be honest. Even if it's a worry, even if you're concerned about what you ask might hurt their feelings. I think I'm learning more and more women just want clarity. They want to be extremely clear on what's, what's, what you're thinking and what's going on. Um, but I've had a tough time doing it, man. I've had a tough time doing it. Except as I've gotten older, it's like I, I, I kind of look forward to more like the FaceTime conversation and stuff like that. Like I don't like, I don't have that joy of being out in the club and chasing women, that kind of shit, man. I, ain't, uh, I don't give a fuck about all of that. I ain't about that. Ending up with some rap scow in it, you know, 4 a.m. And she's, you know, 
bending over in the yard or whatever, and she got a mouth full of nutter butters, you know, or or um, you know, she got a mouth full of those uh, what are those Keebler cookies or whatever, you know, them beautiful. They not those nutter butter hitters, but they them other ones, the Keeblers, with them little baby boys hiding cookies in the trees. She got a mouth full of them. You know, she got a mouth full of them chips of highs. And she out, she's trying to get you to do her doggy style. I ain't, I ain't doing all of that shit. I ain't doing all of that shit. But the dark arts are out there. When you get when you're alone and you get off stage, the dark that's that's what's milling around looking for you is the dark arts. So you better come fucking correct with yourself and your life. Um, let's take another call here. Oh, oh, we got a call right here. It came in. Onward. Hi, Theo. Um, quick question. And this is a man with a poodle right here in this. And this is really the dog episode. This is a dog episode here because they had eight poodles, got that lady or eight um, wamaraners or whatever schnitzels and then they got this man got a poodle onward so when if, if you're ever on like the a verge of a, a relapse what do you do to cope with that or, you know what do you do how do you Ooh, and this dog just licked that man when he said that sorry that dog boy that thing hella gentle more solve that problem Okay, if I'm on the verge of relapse, well, I'll talk about that for a second, you know, and I think he's talking about relapsing on drugs and alcohol. And for those of you, some of you don't know, I'm, you know, I don't do drugs and alcohol. Um, I'm about, about maybe 32, a little over two years. Um, and I may do them again. I do not know. Um, I'm not going to promise you that I will not, but I, I will promise you that my life, for me, my life has gotten better since I have taken a break from drugs and alcohol. And, tried to find ways uh, to at least get a look at my own spirit and see ways that I can help um, help work on my own spirit. And I couldn't even see my spirit before this, before I got uh, before I started practicing sobriety. If I'm feeling on the verge of a relapse, I do the same things, man. I call friends, same things we talked about earlier when the man called said he was feeling depressed. I call friends. Um, I'll go to a meeting. You know, I'll attend AA meetings. Um, or other 12-step meetings, um, or Al-Anon, any of those types of things. You know, I'll go to a meeting. I will call a friend. Um, the biggest thing I have to learn is to ask for help. That's the biggest thing. You know, and this goes back even, I mean, this it's so funny you called about this, and I'm so grateful that you asked this question because it's the same thing about commitment. It's the same thing about me just wanting to be the only person that's allowed to, to run my show or to even know what my show is. You know, I don't want to tell somebody else that I'm afraid. I don't want to tell somebody else that I'm scared. I don't want to tell somebody else that, you know, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know sometimes deep down in me if I really want to tell somebody else that I care even. But I, I know for a fact, I don't want to tell somebody else that I'm scared. I don't want to tell somebody else that I'm afraid. I don't want to tell somebody else that, that I think I'm going to mess up. or Because if I, tell some, if I do that, then I'm weak. You know, then I'm weak. And... Uh, And if I tell somebody else, oh, that's not it. I'm, as I'm saying that, I'm losing my feeling there of, I was on, I felt like I was really on some feelings. Because for me, I try to listen and talk and sometimes I surf over my body with my, like trying to feel something while I'm talking. And if I really feel something, it, like a feeling, if I get a strong feeling, then that means that I'm on to something. It's almost like looking for gold, like running a gold detector, metal detector over my, while I'm talking, I'm like running a metal detector over my, my heart and looking for feelings. But no, I don't want to admit, I was having more feelings when I said, I don't want to admit to somebody that I'm scared, you know, it's, but I, but that's what I do now. I'll call, that's what I'll do. But now I haven't been in a severe instance. This weekend was one of the biggest instances that I had. I was in Mexico and I wanted a damn beer, bro. I wanted a beer. 
because I was there and the beach and the commercials and the advertising is baked into your fucking bones. And I wanted a damn beer. I thought if I poured beer in my mouth, that a million pieces of, you know, beautiful vaginas and Mexican, you know, crotchets and all of that was going to fall out of the sky or something. You know, you have this vision in your head, all these titas and titties and everything going to fall out the sky and land in my mouth. And my tongue's going to be all nippled up and everything. You know, that leche duffel just landing in daddy's fucking face hole. But that's not the truth. You know, and I just let that kind of ride. I told my buddy, I said, man, I really feel like having a beer. You know, I, at least I verbalized it. You know, you got a little dog there. I see you got a friend in your video. You're lucky. You got a cute dog and that dog is licking your head while you sitting there asking about this kind of stuff. And that's nice. You have somebody that cares. But that's what I do. I got to admit, I got to have to say I need help. Dude, I don't want to need help. I don't want to need help. I want to, I want to know you, uh, you know, cause somewhere inside of me, you can't help me. I help me. I don't want to need help. I don't need you. That's what it was. That's what it is. Somewhere a long time ago, I needed somebody and they didn't do it. And so I decided at that point, I guess I don't need you. The only person I need is me. And I'll be damned if I'm ever going to need somebody. I ain't needing somebody. I'll be damned if I'm ever going to need somebody again. And so that's where I'm at, man. That's not where I'm at, but that's why I know there's a, a lot of me is still in that place. I can feel that inside of me. And so it's hard for me to ask for help. It's hard for me to want to be part of a group. You know? It's hard for me to really commit to a group. It's hard for me to, you know, when my family's together to stand up and tell my family that I love them, man. Because for years in my life, I fucking couldn't stand any of those motherfuckers, man, if I'm honest. I'm not talking about right now, but when I think back on being a kid, I didn't like a dude. You know, I hate to say this, but I used to have feelings like, man, if my sibling passed away or that kind of thing, what I, I used to wonder if I would even have any feelings, if I would even care. And not now, now it's not, that's not me. But I'm talking about when I was younger, you know, I would be like, man, if, you know, if my mother passed away, if my siblings passed would I even care? And that's because I was so, I was so, I had so convinced myself that I didn't need anybody but me. But now, even though I step, man, I don't want to admit it, but now I'm not afraid to admit that I don't need, I need other people. But that's why I still have so much trouble committing. Committing in a relationship, committing in every. When I look through my life, I've had trouble committing. I went to seven different universities to get my degree. I don't want to commit. I don't want to commit my time. I don't want to commit my existence. I mean, just I just don't want to commit. I don't want to. I do, I want to do. Ah, I got to do this. I got. I, I never want. I don't want to work with others. You know, I don't want to. But you do that enough, you say, just me, just me, just me. No, me, I can do it. I can handle it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I know what's best. I know what's best. I know what's best. And guess what? You get exactly what you wanted. You get alone. You end up feeling alone. You end up being alone. You end up being alone, man. And if you're not alone, you end up fucking feeling alone. And that's, dude, that's the same. That, uh, being alone and feeling alone, it's two different things. You can be alone, but you could be married. You can be in a family of four and feel alone as fuck. Because you don't want to open up. You don't want to let people in. You don't want to admit that I need help. I need help just with this minute. You don't want to take your spouse in the other room and say, hey, I, I just... You know, I need help thinking about this for a second. I just need help 
this is my fear right here. I'm scared that I'm going to do this and that you're going to feel this way. But, and then that's you being brave. Now, if somebody then puts you on that, puts, puts you down in that moment or does that kind of thing, then you know who they are. Or then you start, you know, you can start to figure that out, but it may take them used to getting used to you being that way. But yeah, man, it's been the scariest thing in my life is to have, to admit that I don't want to be a, I don't want to be alone. That's scary. But that's what I do, man. If I, you know, I had that feeling this weekend, but also I'll celebrate sometimes. You, you know, when we did our fantasy football draft this weekend, I went and got a, um, they had Corona makes a, a non-alcoholic beer called Serra, C-E-R-A. And I went and got me a full pack of Serras, bruh. Dude, I had two of them, and I thought I was fucked up, dude. I started stumbling now. I started stumbling outside for fun. Dude, it was, a, and we had a blast. But, but yeah, you do things to let, to, to, to open your heart up. And I see you got a dog right there, and that's a big move. They recommend that to a lot of people in sobriety, get an animal. Get something that you can start to show that you love it. Get something you can start to show that you love it. So that's beautiful, man. I appreciate you calling. We might, uh, what else do we have? Do we have anything else today? Um, all right, let's take this video call that came in right here. Hey, Theo. Um, my name is Patrick. Uh, I'm from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Ooh, Patrick. And this man is dressed up. He got on a nice kind of a robe or something and like a yellow kind of golden ribbon around his neck or something around his chest kind of. So he looks like a dang, like he just, he looks like somebody won him in a prize in a contest. But this is Patrick from Northern Ireland. And that's uh, the Pogues country, I think. Um, Shane McGowan. And, uh, and onward, thank you for calling, Patrick. I'm staying at home today applying for jobs in my Batman dressing gown. Um, the past year has been a bit of a struggle through one thing or another, and I fell pretty hard into a bit of a depression and lost a lot of confidence in myself. Uh, recently, I had to take a bit of a demotion and work, which is a, it's a bit of a first for me. Uh, thank you for calling, Patrick. I can imagine that, 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 that that's tough, taking a demotion. Oh, man, I can feel that because you probably feel... You know, if you, especially if you were thinking kind of, you know, decent of yourself, then to feel like, oh, that other people don't think that you're capable uh, or that they don't think that you're moving forward. Um, that's got to be pretty tough, man. I appreciate you sharing that. Onward. I hit my pride a little bit, um, but I feel that could be a bit of a blessing because I feel that my depression has been caused in part by a need to help people and not on my current line of work, which is finance. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, man. You know what's so funny is that I'll tell you the greatest day I ever had in my life, and I appreciate you saying this, Patrick, the need to help people. The greatest day that I've ever had in my whole life, I was um, in India, and I was working with a group, and we were doing some, um, we went to a school for disabled children, and we, a storm had come and really damaged the place, and a lot of stuff was all over the ground in this one area, like a lot of just heavy pieces of construction and all that it, and we spent the day just clearing off their playground. like, And it was hard work, and it was long work, and we took breaks and like spent time with these kids. And, uh, and yeah, man, at the end of that day, I felt, I felt like a human being. I felt undeniably that this is what the world is about. Um, onward. I was just wondering if you can make any suggestions as to how I can stay focused on looking for jobs and avoiding procrastination because uh, I'm writing about problem solving one minute and then I'm watching a face being carved out of Parmesan, Facebook the next. <laughs> I'm writing about problem solving one minute and then I'm watching a, a face being carved out of Parmesan the next minute. Um, and Parmesan is a cheese. It's not a serial killer or nothing. That's hilarious, bro. I appreciate you. I uh, appreciate this. Um... You know what you can do? I'll tell you this point blank. I'm looking at you right now. You're a happy guy. Um, you just made me laugh. One thing you can do is continue to interact with others. That's what you can do. Keep interacting. Get out there. Walk around. Meet people. Go to the library. I don't care. Go to the coffee shop. Say hey to people. 
Find other people that have law that have had a demotion. Find anybody, anybody, because you just made me laugh. You can do that to somebody else. That's it. So you need to interact with others, man. You need to interact with others, and that's it. That's exactly what you can do. And I promise you that good things are going to happen to you. I promise you a million percent that you go out and you put one foot in front of the other. Take action. You have to take action. You cannot, there's no, you will not, you will, nothing will get better if you just stay where you are. If you just stay, you know, when you get in a tough moment, it's like you can take some breaks. You can enjoy Facebook. You can do this or that, but you need to take it. You need to stay moving, stay in motion, stay in motion, keep it cruising. Let's hear a little more from you. Um, I love listening to the podcast. Uh, it's really down there, hilarious. It's a place where people can actually learn something. And I can't remember who said it. Maybe it was Jordan Peterson. Um, but people are being like starved of authenticity, uh, which this podcast has some buckets, man. So, I uh, just want to say a big shout out to my cousin uh, Timmy and my mate James O'Hara, both uh, big fans of the podcast along with me. So, keep the good work and thanks very much, man. Cheers, brother. Uh, thank you for calling, man. Cheers to you up in northern Belfast. Dude, I want to go over there. Doesn't it sound cool being in Ireland? Man, it's so cool. You know, I think especially having a country where it seemed like there's still a lot of like, you know, country pride, you know, pride in your country. Or like, you, you know, to me, your voice, to me, obviously your voice sounds unique, even though in your country it probably sounds normal. Uh, to me, it sounds rare because it's a different sound than I'm used to, a different octave and a different, you know, the Irish accent or the Belfast accent. Um, excuse me. But yeah, it's, uh, it seemed like, yeah, just nice to hear like an, it's like, yeah, I picture you guys being in Ireland and, you know, riding around on like little, you know, Irish ponies and stuff. And the ponies have been drinking at the bar. And so they're late, and you guys are just standing outside, and you're angry, you know, and you're like, whoa, where's the horses? And um, and the horses finally show up, but they're late because they've been drinking, you know, and they've been watching the footy on telly. And, um, and finally you guys get on the horses or the ponies, they're actually ponies, and then you just go right back to the bar. And I'm like, that's awesome, dude. Um, but I appreciate you guys' support. I appreciate the nice words. Uh, but that's what you can do. Just stay busy. You know, at the end there, you mentioned to your friends, it's like you're not thinking about yourself. You're going to be fine. You know, you just stay busy and keep thinking about others, dude. And you're going to do great. But stay active in it. And we can't get caught up in it, you know. It's like we have to be careful when we are doing stuff that we don't, even when we start to do stuff that we don't think it's about us. And we stay true to it. We've, we make sure that we touch in base with our roots. We make sure that we find people who we can connect with um, and ask for help. You know, even if we're just asking for help to like just make sure that we're, hey, am I doing this okay? Do I seem okay? You know? Maybe ask somebody, do you know that I love you? Like, when was the last time you asked, like, a, you know? You know, I remember one thing that makes me sad sometimes. I'm not sad, but like I, I, I when I was really struggling with like, having like any feelings, like I used to like really struggle with having like any emotions at all. I would have a ton of thoughts, but I have any emotions and I didn't know who I was. I didn't know at all. I knew I'd been alive and I, and I knew, you know, had a lot of experiences and I remembered many of them just like anyone else, but I didn't know who I was. And I used to ask my best friend, I'd be like, who am I? Like, do you have any, or one of my best friends, like, do you can't just, how, who am I? Like, can you tell me anything about myself? Because um, I was so out of touch with my feelings. You know, and your feelings are really where you learn who you are. Uh, and if we're fortunate enough to really, you know, really connect with other people, I think we'll find that we're probably, get, we're a good person. You know, that we mean well. Um but yeah, look, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you checking in, Patrick. And if I had a fucking job, I'd give it to you. You know, I don't know what I'd do for a, if they have a Belfast person, but I would give you a job, man. But I think we'll, we'll close up right there, man. We had, um, 
you know, D Snyder hit the hotline. I'm gonna put it. We'll put his call on next week. We've had some other calls that came in. We just couldn't get to everything. Um, but I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, like, and look, sometimes I talk about shit on this podcast. It might not make any sense to anybody. Oh, well, you know, I'm, you know, all I can do is make my effort. But Tiny Sandu, who is he? That's the craziest thing is we never even seen a picture of him. We never even seen a picture of that magic man, Mr. Tiny Sandu. Isn't that crazy? Just got to keep making it, bro. That's all we can do. Um, we got to keep making it. But I want to thank, we had a lot of great calls, man. The musician that called in on, um, you know, the wiener dog, the killer's dogs, uh, everybody, everybody that called in. Uh, we'll get to some of the rest of it this week. And just keep making it, man. You don't have to solve it all today. You do not have to solve the world today. Just remember that. Um, and if you don't know what's going on, if you don't, if we don't know where we are, we can ask other people for help, you know, and if we, if you're not sure how other people feel, you can ask them like, you know, do you know that I care? Do you know that I do care? Do you know that I love you? Do you know that this, do you know that that? And ask them and if they don't, then you can talk about it. And that's how we, that's how you and me learn. You know, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm not preaching at you. I'm just trying to talk sometimes so that I can feel something myself. On the way out, man, this band is coming to Los Angeles September 7th. They'll be at the Mint. They'll be at the Mint here in Los Angeles. And I may be there. I don't know, though. No, I may or may not. My brother's birthday is the next day, and I'm going to try to make it home for that. But this... uh. We're just making it, man. That's all we're doing. Um, you guys, be good to yourselves. You probably, uh, you probably deserve it. This is Bishop Gunn with Making It. And they will be at the Mint on September 7th. I ain't seen home in about a hundred days. I can almost hear mama pray. For my restless soul And I ain't made a dollar I ain't spent But where it's going ain't killed me yet I still get where I'm bound to go I'm making it I'm making wrong Feel right I'm making it And if hell Making good time Making it, baby and Most all of my plans Slip right through my hands And wind up next to me Broken on the ground if this bottle was an hourglass, I'd say that I'm about an hour past the minute. I should have put it down. Man, it's a line right there. But I'm making it. I'm making wrong feel right. Come on. I'm making it. And if hell's where I'm headed there, I'm making good time.
man. That fits right in between the lines that I've crossed and the friends that I've lost. But I'm in pretty good shape for the shape that I'm in. That just really... Full circle, man. You guys be good to yourselves, dude. Love you, man. <laughs>